Direct on Global Television. Of course, today we'll be taking a look at a very national concern where uh, groups of persons and even the National Assembly has begun the process in reviewing the 1999 constitution of the country. Uh, so we're dedicating this uh, hour for the conversation for the purpose of our constitution review. Joining me for all the discourse is a constitutional lawyer, Mrs. Chinelo Iriele. Good to have you join us on the program. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, I, 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 the last time we had you was advocating for women, and uh, this time around. On International Women's Inter Day. International Women's Day. And uh, yeah. today is uh, World uh, International Water Day. So they're advocating <laughs> for water to be, you know, cleaner yeah. water for efficiency. So we we'll also celebrate that. But uh, let's yes. take a look at a very concerned national issue issue of a constitution. This has sparked concern. You know, it seems that the constitution has been favoring subsections of Nigerians. It seems the constitution is not working for the better of the country. It seems that a lot needs to be done, you know, in the constitution. So this has given you know a lot of concern among Nigerians. So we'll begin that by let's take a look at even our preambles. We understand that there is a committee set up by the National Assembly to begin the process. But before then, what are those things that need to be done? You know, have there been a, 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 a mean an engagement with the people? Has there been a constructive, you know, engagement and talks with the people? These are the issues that we're taking a look at today, so that you know everybody can understand that we're having a constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, not a constitution of some section of this country. Thank you very much. Um, before I start, I want to pay tribute to Professor Ben Wabeze, the greatest constitutional lawyer in this country. And um, I think that was why he was the first person, academician, to become the senior advocate of Nigeria. Mm. May he so rest in peace. Amen. Because he did a lot of work in our constitutions. He contributed so much. Now, can we say that our constitution is the autochthonous? What I mean by autochthonous is, is it people's constitution? Mm. We will begin by looking into our preambles. And um, I have another country's uh, Yeah, uh, to make some few comparisons there. Exactly, to mm. compare with, mm. so that we we'll actually know what we are doing when we say constitution. Because a document, the first paragraph you have in a document says much if not everything, about the document itself. Now, I want to, first of all, look at the South African Constitution, which I believe is humanly made. You know, it has a human <laughs> a face. Human, a human mm -hmm. face. Mm. And when you compare it to our own preamble, it looks like it does not have a soul. Mm. So I begin with the, the South African preamble. He says, we, the people of South Africa, recognize the injustice of our past, honor those who suffered for justice and freedom in our land, respect those who have worked to build and develop our country, and believe that South Africa belongs to all who live in it, united in our diversity. We, therefore, through our freely elected representatives, adopt this constitution as the supreme law of the republic so as to, number one, heal the divisions of the past and establish a society based on democratic values, social justice, and fundamental human rights. Again, lay the foundations for a democratic and open society in which government is based on the will of the people and every citizen is equally protected by the law. Improve the quality of life of all citizens and free the potential of each person mm. and build a united and democratic South Africa able to take its rightful place as a sovereign state in the family of nations. Now, very patriotic. This is our preamble. Let us look at Nigerian's preamble so that you can understand exactly what I'm saying. Because this is constitutional matter and um, 
we need to say the no, way. No, I'm not a lawyer, so you understand <laughs> this better. The, the way it is. Mm. Because Nigerian, the Nigerian preamble is like a human being without a soul. He says, we, the people, number one, people, we are peoples. Just like mm. Professor Ben Webeze said, we are peoples. We are not just people. We are sections. Everybody knows that. Different culture, different, different religion, culture. and all Diversity of that. Diversity in together. so many tribes and the rest of them. Now, we say we, the people of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, having firmly and solemnly resolved to live in unity and harmony as one indivisible and indissoluble sovereign nation under God, dedicated to the promotion of inter-African solidarity, world peace, international cooperation, and understanding. Now, look at it. The, the second phase says, and to provide for a constitution for the purpose of promoting the good government and welfare of all persons in our country on the principles of freedom, equality, and justice, and for the purpose of consolidating the unity of our people. Now, the, our preamble says unity. Unity, in, indivisible, indissoluble, and you are saying consolidating. So that means we realize truly that we need to cons consolidate so unity, that we don't have unity. And what we are looking for today in our 1999 constitution is that word unity. That word unity in every ramification where every Nigeria will feel that I belong, that this, this constitution protects me. Now, let me take you back to um, the first constitutions we had, pre-colonial constitutions. Mm. Those constitutions were meant for those people to enable them govern us, Nigerians, the way that will benefit them, but not for Nigerians. Now, the, the 1914 constitution that is called Lord Frederick Lugard's constitution mm. came into force in, in 1914. Before, before we were called Nigeria, Lord Lugard divided Nigeria as Southern and Northern Protectorate, yeah. where they made Lagos a colony. A colony is like a settlement. And every other thing that they were doing was to ensure that they govern Nigeria to their best interest. Because at a stage, they, they had um, some uh, official members, tw uh, 23 of them, that were all Europeans. Those are the people that will say what is happening in Nigeria. Then later on, they added 13 unofficial members. And these 13 unofficial members, seven of them were Europeans as well, 23, seven, and six Nigerians. And these Nigerians were not included in any decision that we are made. So, is our constitution autochthonous? No. And autochthonous is a constitution made by the people. You see, our, we, we say that government of the people, for the people, and for the people. Mm. But our constitution does not reflect that. And what we are going to do is to look for a way to make it people-oriented. Now, after Lord Lugard, a constitution in, in 1914, a Clifford constitution came in in 2022. Oh, we are, because, you know, I always laugh. 2002. When, no, 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 sorry, 1922. 1922. 1922, mm -hmm. that is a, a Clifford constitution. Yeah, exactly. You see, when some people think that, um, when they hear that Nigeria was colonized by uh, Britain, they think they just came and maybe we were suffering and decided to help us, you know, took over mm. the, the, the government. It wasn't so. They came, fought, and captured. This is what we should know, that Britain captured Nigeria. Mm. And every other thing they were doing was to enable them govern us properly. That was why when we begin to agitate those days, from history, though, they, they, they bring up another constitution. 
after Clifford's constitution in 20, uh, sorry, <laughs> in, 19, in 1922, mm. Richard, Richard, Richard Constitution came. Richard Constitution was uh, um, 20, I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm saying 20 because we're 20, 20. <laughs> Richard's <laughs> Constitution came in 1946. Okay. Now, Clifford's Constitution, why he was trying to make the Constitution, you know, to reflect People. Uh, people. Mm, people centric you know, constitution. On the ways of the people. Mm. He tried to engage Nigerians to participate in election mm. matters just to make them feel that they belong. And um, but unfortunately they pegged the amount of money to be paid at hundred pounds. That wasn't affordable. And uh, exactly at that time the Nigerians were looking for money to eat and you know the uh, ten hundred pounds those days is a lot of money. Mm. So they could not. So what were they trying to do? They were trying to make us happy in, uh, somehow. That didn't work. Then um, the McPherson Constitution came after Richards in 1951. Actually, McPherson was the one that tried a bit to bring in, you know, the natives to contribute while trying to see how it could be people's constitution. Natives, there was a constitutional conference that was organized during McPherson's time, you know. So people were able to say what they want. People were able to say what they want. Mm. So from there, uh, Oliver Littleton came in um, 1954. And that was what ushered in us into the, our uh, independence constitution of 1960. So things were still not working well there was no full participation of Nigerians. Because we have diversity in culture and tribe and so many things. People want to belong. People want to have their constitution, feel what they feel, make them you know, feel that they are part of the country we are talking about. So this was the, the chronology of the constitutions we had pre-colonial until we got our independence. And our independent constitution was just like they handed us over the constitution. Okay, you people have been agitating. Oh, yeah, take it. It was nothing actually until 1963 when we got what is called Republican Constitution. So, 1963 Constitution became the first Republican Constitution, and um, from there we got um, the second Republican Constitution, 79 and third one in 89, and the present one that we have now. And one would think that by now, 1999 constitution will reflect exactly what people need. But unfortunately, it's not. And that is why some people are clamoring, you know? But that's a concern. Yes, but they are clamoring review. for a constitution that, is, that has human face, mm. you know, that they can benefit from. Mm. Now, 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 you've given a background to this conversation because uh, uh, prior to this time, a lot of Nigerians will not know how uh, we are actually here. But there's a striking part of the constitution that is actually what the people want. And if we feel that if this is being given attention to, I think we'll be able to address some of the issues that we're having in this country. The chapter two of the constitution, uh, we, which is actually talking and providing for fundamental objectives and directive principle of state policy, what do you have to say about chapter two of the constitution? Mm -hmm. It has it reflects a lot. Social objective, it reflects, you know, foreign policy, it reflects educational objective, which is what the people really want. It's not even about where they were currently, the, the concurrence, it's not even about all of that. What the people really want is the life for them to be better, where people can really say, I'm proud to be a Nigerian. That's right. The chapter two of our constitution is based on the objectives that, like you rightly said, will make every Nigeria feel that they belong. Mm. But unfortunately, it was not made justiciable. I came across um, a video of Professor Benoit Bezeme, so rest in peace, where he said that he single-handedly drafted Chapter 2 he was a member of the committee. He was, a, he was the chair of the subcommittee. 1999, 1999, 1999 constitution. constitution. That drafted, he said that 
all the members of the committees did not appear for meeting one day. So he ended up drafting it alone. And that he made it to be justiciable, to be enforceable. But on presentation, his decision was rejected. Because oh. to protect, to protect the, the, uh, the legislatures, the executive, and the judiciary, you know, if you look at what we have under Chapter 2, economic rights, social rights, mm. educational rights, mm. objectives, and the rest of them, you know, really the food security, but we have it as non-enforceable rights, that if anybody violates on those rights, you cannot enforce them in court. And you begin to wonder why. And what then is, is the essence of government? And, 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 and for me, if it was rejected, why did they still re leave it in the Constitution? Because that is what is the causing the problem. They should have removed it. You know, it's just like uh, giving you orange with one hand and taking it away from you. Uh, because with, with this is what really hand. reflects, you know, the excellence of government, the excellence of democracy. That's right. That's right. But unfortunately, like um, when we talk about it, some people will say that uh, it's being taken care of in another way. Which other way? Yet we have it in our constitution. Our constitution is a ground norm. Our constitution is the ground norm that everything which, that should happen to us, how we live and mm. how we should Operate. be, operational document of this country is constitution. And now we are in 1999 constitution. People have been clamoring for a change of constitution, you know, because it did not, it's not uh, reflecting on what they want. So this is, uh, for, for so many scholars have said, and I am adding to the number, that our 1999 constitution is not a people's constitution. We have so many minorities groups in Nigeria. They have to be captured, the ones of Nigeria. Like now, I gave an example of uh, the, the, the long um, proposed state police. Mm. And I say, state police is good because if I am in Imo State and um, somebody from maybe Bauchi comes as a security officer, as a police officer, to protect me. Mm. And I don't understand his language or her language. How are we going to communicate? Or is there going to be a school to teach them and I on how to communicate, understand ourselves? So there are so many issues that should be looked into. Because they don't know the terrain, number one. If you come to my state now, and you are not from my state, you don't know the terrain. You don't know anything. I can't even speak anything. I can even curse you in my language because you, you don't understand my language. I can say something, you know, that will hurt you. How can you now protect me? So these are the things we should look into. But first and foremost, for us to make our constitution, people's constitution, indigenous, we need to have the people to say what they want. Even if it means carrying... The, the town hall meetings to local governments to get from people exactly what they want so that they'll be happy. This is just a document. I've just, we just read the, the South African Constitution, they, I mean, a preamble. They started by apologizing to those people that were made slaves because Britain made us slaves in our own country. And the constitution that came is just on uh, indivisible and indissoluble, where we are already divided. Like Professor Benwabeze said, we are already divided. We, 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 in our preamble, we mentioned about consolidating. If we are not divided. Not even, there was not even existing unity for you to consolidate. On exactly. Unity. Exactly. So why are we fooling ourselves? Nothing that does not exist. Mm. We continue to, to put it together, to paint it, and make it look as if it exists. It does not exist. So let us make a constitution that can work for us, even inside the constitution. We have so many things mm. that is not I'm, in tandem with to, uh, how human beings should live. I'm, I'm going to come to that. We, we quite understand that uh, they have been making effort of amendment. You know, 2022, we had even the electoral amendment. Even these are not really, you know, birth, 
you know, the hearings of, of Nigerians, and several attempts has been made for this to be, uh, for us to get it right. Do you feel that uh, the review totally will be, will have, will have a, any impact, or totally you want the situation, or you're advocating for the fact that a constitution must, you know, be totally be written again? Well, it's not being written again because there are some things in there that we can take, you know. But the problem we have is we have had so many amendments in our constitution. Mm. And I, I, I feel so that... Several recommendations have been made upon this, uh, some of these amendments. They yeah. have held, you know, some... You made mention of town hall meeting. About two years ago, they held referendum meetings in all some regions of this country. They made several re recommendations. But it has not been implemented. Well, I don't know the, the town hall meetings they had before, who and who were representatives, because it's not enough to take the people, the same people that are in government, mm. and converge them. Maybe you take them from Abuja and go to one state and have a meeting, and you say you have had, had uh, um, town hall meetings. We need real representatives, even those people that can't even speak English. Because they, 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 the cultures are too diverse mm. that we need to begin to harmonize, to, them. harmonize them, bring them together. It's about, look, I always say that laws are made for man, not man, made for law. If you are making a law that is not going to work for human beings, why do you make it? Are you just making it to, so that you, you say that you, you made a law? So we have to go to the grassroots and get that we have so many minorities that are not even recognized in this country, and they don't feel they're part of the government. So if our constitution does not carry and protect this group of people, then what are we talking about? Then we don't have an indigenous constitution. Right. I think we'll get to talk more. Let me get to connect, uh, joining us from Lagos. Uh, Sochima Peters uh, will be connecting with us from Lagos just to add voice to this convention. Uh, Sochima Peters, if you can hear me very clearly, good to have you join us on the show. All right, so I will get to have him connected so that he can actually join his voice uh, to the conversions uh, uh, back to my constitutional lawyer because uh, you actually um, you've educated a lot of people right now because uh, some Nigerians don't even understand the way to go regarding a constitution. There are some sections that you do not even find it pleasant uh, when it has to do with citizenship, when it has to do with other issues raised on this constitution. Has this uh, affected you know, the operations of, uh, of some people in the country? You know, yeah. diversity and all of that. Yes. Um, our constitution, in chapter 12 of our constitution, talks on discrimination, uh, freedom from discrimination. Mm. And we have in the same constitution, under chapter 3, section 26, citizenship, to become a citizen of Nigeria under registration, a woman cannot have her foreign husband become a citizen of Nigeria. But we, it provides for a Nigerian man that marries a foreign woman that can become a citizen under registration in our constitution. And I ask myself, why is it so? Why are women being discriminated against? I'm sure that uh, we have so many women that are still looking for husbands today. So what if we have some of these foreigners that want to marry our women and they found out that they cannot become Nigerian citizens if they marry? And because of that, they say, no, I'm not marrying you again. And are, are we considering it? Because in other countries like America, if you marry, if you're a Nigerian man and you marry an American woman, you get your citizenship, you know? At, By um, marriage. Through marriage. But why is our own different? Or do you it's feel they're trying to check the uh, population because it's just what, what, population? What, what population? Do they care? Those people, it, who cares about if I'm, if I'm not married now and I have um, a, a suitor, a foreign man that wants to marry me and because of the, maybe he wants to become a citizen after the marriage and because of what we have in our constitution, the discrimination against uh, a spouse of Nigerian women from becoming citizens of Nigeria mm. and goes back. Who suffers it? You know me that will suffer it. You understand what so I mean? So do you feel that the, some the, the motivation doesn't know about it. Mm. So I think for us to make it, 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 just let us practice what we have in our constitution. Why will you put under section 12 that 
freedom from discrimination. And you are discriminating against one group of people in the same constitution concerning their marital life. Because we have laws under, fundam under uh, Chapter 4, Fundamental Human Rights, where we have different types of rights. That, this is my right to marry. I have right to marry who I want to marry. And you are hindering me with your, your Section 26. Because it's like 26A, you know, that if I, if I marry a foreign um, man, he will never become a Nigerian citizen. So you can see what I'm talking about. So that, that section should be Nigeria. I can even, I can, we can even go there so that you see how it is captured, you know. Because um, now, citizenship under Chapter 3 and uh, Section 26, citizenship by registration, says, subject to the provisions of Section 28 of the Constitution, a person to whom the provisions of this section applies may be registered as a citizen of Nigeria if the president is satisfied that he is a person of good character. He has shown clear intention of his desire to be domiciled in Nigeria, and he has taken the oath of allegiance prescribed in the seventh schedule to this constitution. The provision of this section shall apply to, this is where we are focusing now, any woman who is or has been married to a citizen of Nigeria, any woman, what stops them from adding any woman or man? Did you get me? Mm. This provision of the section shall apply to any woman who is or has been married to a citizen of Nigeria or every person of full age and capacity born outside Nigeria. So they should just add woman or man. This is going to exist uh, both sex, man and woman. That's discriminatory. You know, very discriminatory. And a lot of people are not you've, aware have, of have, this. Have you found out what probably was the motivation behind that? Well, some people will tell you behind the camera that um, we don't want our women to, to marry foreign, foreign men. Meanwhile, our women are there. Many of them are not married. And the, the, this group of people that says they don't want our women to be marrying foreign women, uh, foreign men, mm. they're already married. So, so it's about uh, being sensitive to issues yeah. that matter for you and I. You cannot just gender, culture, and all of that. Exactly. These are considerations that we we'll Exactly. Be so these are the you things know, even, that uh, even we should we take moving, away yes. and, uh, from our constitution. It's yes. very discriminatory. Even as we are moving forward, okay. Uh, and it, it negates the, the section 20, 20, um, section twelve mm. that talks about uh, freedom from discrimination. Mm. It's not right. All right. Let's get to Lagos. Sochima Peters, if you can hear me clearly, good to have you join us on the show. All right, I think we'll go on a quick break. Once we are back, we'll get Shotima Peters to join the conventions. And then we'll also take a look at the fact that the, Fed, the, the House of Reps have signed uh, the new um, uh, wedge for a judiciary uh, chief justice. And uh, this has been a concern for uh, if we can get uh, uh, cases and a court, you know, to be independent because justice, uh, the court was to be hope of a common man. But what has it been? Is this an effort by the government to see how justices will be quite liberty? Uh, be given in the country. All of these are concerns to Nigerians, and of course, I still have my constitutional lawyer. I know he's, he, she's a lawyer, but would not want to touch on sensitivity of the case. But uh, then we'll see how she can actually give a concern as an activist as well. Don't go away. Stay with us.
still stand with us on the decks. Joining me from Lagos is Executive Director of both Net Youth Network, uh, Sochima Peters. Good to have you join us on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to always be here. All right. Uh, we, are, we are talking about the issue and the move by the federal government uh, and the Senate to review the constitution. There are several issues uh, in the constitution. And of course, uh, I had a constitutional lawyer who gave a breakdown of even the preamble and all of this. What has been your concern in particular, you know, even as the Senate uh, uh, are making moves to review the constitution? Y yes. Um, first and foremost, um, it's actually very important that we review the constitution because there are a lot of lacunas a lot of loopholes that need to be filled um, for us to get a robust constitution that would really, you know, checkmate the excesses of our politicians and our leaders. Um, it's very, very important, and it's um, long overdue that we begin to review um, the constitution. Um, I dare say that, um, you know, 70% uh, of the problems emanating in Nigeria can be traced to the lacunas that is um, felt or that is seen in the constitution. First and foremost, um, the um, omission of, uh, uh, you know, creating policies, you know, uh, re revisiting the constitution with respect to education is a concern for me. You know, I, I went through the, um, the areas that they claimed that needed re um, reviewing and you, you, you realize that education is not part of it. And so this area is something that I think that is very important, is very crucial, that we need to revisit, we need to, uh, you know, uh, review. There are a lot of things, a lot of things that need to be reviewed with respect to education in Nigeria. And But I'm, I'm not seeing that in... Uh, In, in the in the lead you know um, um, uh, powers of of the of of the state and federal government are they are they saying that the the state government should you know do that themselves you know so this area is actually something that's bothering me I do not know what their intent is for leaving out um you know that um, area because as it is now the curriculum our edu educational curriculum academic cu curriculum in Nigeria needs to be revisited you know a lot of um, um, um you know training retraining of our teachers has to be done these are things that need to be revisited but none of these have been you know um, looked into so that area is something that is really bothering me i do not know why they um you know uh, excluded it but every other thing in the in the in the list is totally okay totally fine and i think that um you know it's long overdue that we revisited um those items Thank you. The issue of fundamental objectives uh, that we highly highlighted where issue of educational objective uh, was to be a concern. And then you may mention that uh, this, has been this has been neglected. And of course, of visiting that, just as Suchima uh, Peters is rightly saying, uh, will make our education be prioritized by the government. And this brought us a conversion to the issue of the concurrent, the exclusive, and the residual list. Talk to us about at these exclusions. Yes, um, I want to again the Professor Ben Wabeze. In 1976, when they were the Constitutional Assembly were drafting the Constitution, 1999 Constitution, 50 percent of the matters in concurrent list was moved to exclusive list, and 60, uh, 50 percent again was taken from residual list to executive, exclusive uh, legislative list. Mm. And that was when our problem started. Because you see, you see that all these matters that were moved into the uh, exclusive list had left the other side empty, and everybody begins to clamor for the federal work. Everything has been moved to federal which is not supposed to be so. This is, Professor Mobeze said that was when our problem started Stop. and we are clamoring for restructuring. All these things should be put into place. Everything, all those things that were moved, maybe they will begin to bring them back. Let the country work. That's what how, how, we have residual list, we have a concurrent list, we have a 
um, uh, exclusive list, then suddenly, just for maybe a few people that want to benefit from it, begin, you know what is 50%? Almost half. Every Move power to, is now in the federal. Exactly. Exactly. If not uh, 95, 99%, maybe 80% or 90%. So the excess of matters has been moved to the federal because of this. Mm. So you the know? issue of three tiers of government have not been felt because it's supposed to be at the, at the federal, federal the level. And the local exactly. Government. Exactly. If you, go, if you go to, like, if you go to my state, in Imo State, you cannot see federal establishment there. Everything is moved to the center. And that is why you see people, you know, they don't have jobs. They, 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 they are living the, the East. And when they are supposed to be there, this government is supposed to be a regional thing. Mm -hmm. where, wherever you stay in Nigeria, you should be able to do what you want to do and feel happy and do, just to feel that you belong to Nigeria. But Easterners, I'm sorry to say that, but Easterners don't feel that they belong because you cannot find any federal establishment in the East. And they belong to Nigeria, don't they? We, we are all Nigerians. Mm. So most everybody come to the center to, 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 to work. Most every come to, come, everybody come to the center to belong to Nigeria. So they should, it's high time so we begin power. to diversify all these institutions to states, in every state. I use mine as an example because I know it very well. I come from there and I know that we are suffering. There is no, the only thing you have maybe in nowhere is um, hotels everywhere, just like you have hotels filled up in, uh, in Abuja. We don't have we're, f federal establishment. It's, it's very, very important that Nigeria should know that every part of Nigeria belongs to Nigeria, mm. that what this one has should also go to Very the other. Well. Equitable distribution of our wealth. Exactly. So we'll that we feel that. We, are, we belong. Mm. We'll come back to that. Uh, so, uh, so Tuma, what do you have to say about the equal, uh, equal distributions from both the center to the state and the local government? It seems the local government seems to be very empty. Yes. Chinelo, if I'm correct. This is Chinelo yes. has said it's actually correct. Yes. So um, I do not know why the federal government wants to, you know, um, amass all the powers to themselves. Uh, this is where the, this, this was the genesis of our problems. Then where do the state comes in, um, come in? Now, the issue of um, concurrent, um, exclusive and residualism should be adequately, uh, you know, um, shared among the three tiers of government. For example, in the um, concurrent list, can we uh, ensure that education, education is even taken down to the um, you know residual list whereby it is the states that have the you know um, um, the powers to create policies, you know, with respect to education, with respect to our um, our security system. All right, these things are things that have been taken up by the government. And you realize that in the concurrent, um, um, even in the concurrent list. The federal government have powers to create policies in the concurrent list, while the state government also have powers. But when, it, when there's a clash, you realize that the federal government, you know, takes precedence, which is not supposed to be. Now, education needs to be taken down to the grassroots. And you realize that whatever we're doing, we're doing it for the people. We're doing it for the masses. And you, you, you should, we should understand that the people have direct impact with their state government rather than with the federal government. And so it's very, very important that this, you know, um, list, uh, you know, the devolution of powers, the, the state government needs to get more power. The state government needs to accrue more responsibilities to themselves. Or it's not just about going to the center every month and getting their money and coming back, becoming lazy in their offices. No, they should be, you know, given more responsibilities because they have direct, you know, um, touch with the people. They have direct access to the people. And so, and we are still coming over to the local government, um, uh, you know, um, issue, the, the lacuna created by the you know, um, um, uh, the, the, the almost, um, you know, uh, irresponsibility by the local government. And I think it's due to the influence of the state government also. We're coming to that. But for now, can we empower the state government 
to ensure that they are doing more. If, if, I, if, if even if they go to the center to get this, um, um, you know, monthly allocations, let us give them more responsibility to be able. And there should be no federal interference whenever they create this, these policies. So it's very important that there should be devolution of power. We, are, we have been clamoring for state police. All right, state policing is actually the way forward to ensure that we, you know, um, improve. All right on our security system in Nigeria. And that is because the states actually have much more access to the communities through the people, all right, which the federal government cannot really, readily do. So it has actually very, very, it's actually very important that we give the state more powers, you know, as it is. All right. All right. Let, let's take a look at the issue of cost of governance. By the power, uh, by the fact that everyone has come to the center, uh, it seems that uh, more of our funds have been pushed, you know, to the center. Yes, the resource control we are talking about. So now we resource are now... control and power. A lot, of, a lot, a lot of power is being vested on the federal. You know, so everybody comes to the federal to beg. That's yeah. it. And, and, and there's a lot of cost of it, implication to that. that. That is it. That's why things are not working. Everybody you go to Lagos. By the time people were trying to move from Lagos to Abuja, you, you think that Lagos will be decongested. Mm. You know. But unfortunately, <laughs> Lagos is worse now because apart from Lagos, Abuja, and some few areas, there is nothing that is happening in other places. So everybody wants to live, wants to survive. So they're moving in. But if you have all these things established in these places and that you call Nigeria, mean, I don't know. But if we, if we really say these states, these regions mm. belong to Nigeria, mm. Impact, make it, make it impactful so that the people will know that they belong to Nigeria. Is that what is giving rise to Biafra? Well, uh, is, is it only Biafra? Everybody is agitating, both uh, Yoruba people they are also agitating because that, that they, they don't feel that they belong. They, don't, they feel marginalized. If you go to like other, other countries, you see that a lot of people from that side are the people that are leaving the country because they, they feel they don't belong to this country. And tell me, why would they feel they belong? When they finish school, there is no employment because they must have to come to the center. The center is all, all already saturated. So let's make this thing a, 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 a human face. Let's make our people, the citizens of Nigeria, just like you said in your preamble, for the people of the people mm. and for the people. It's not just for us to have it in our constitution. In as much as our preamble is uh, 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 so uh, watery, like um, compared to that of uh, South Africa, mm. which we should make people, what is the unity? What is the unity we are talking about? Because of the issue of consolidation of unity. Nigeria has never, we are, we are always been divided, but it's, we are more divided. We are more like divided this. because you, do, you, have to, you have to show the unity. Are you using, saying unity with mouth? Are you using unity, to say it with mouth, when there is nothing to show anywhere physically that we are united? Some parts of this country don't feel they belong to this country. And why is this so? And what are we doing? Okay, like uh, he, he, you asked. Is it what is giving rise to Biafra? If they if they don't if they're not recognized in Nigeria, and they want to go on their own, what stops them? Why will you stop them? Because they, they come to the center, you, you you don't give them anything. You marginalize them you, because they 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 are Igbos or they they are from south south or from they are from south southeast. You don't give them anything. You make them feel that they don't belong. Then leave them to go. Whether, whether going is the best or not, it's not what we are here to discuss. It's only God that knows whether going... For, 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 for me, I want a united Nigeria because I have a lot of friends from every part of this country that I don't want to begin to answer um, from this place, from this place where the unity will not be there anymore. And they, you know they brought us together. The Britain brought us to, together. And if they brought us together and we agreed to come together, why can't we not make it work? Even from the days past, up to this moment, our present government should ensure that this disparity, this discrimination stops so that if you, if you answer a Nigerian, mm. you will feel a Nigerian. Right. Let's carry establishment, government establishment to every part of the 
the, the country mm. so that people will stop coming to, to the center. So resource control is moved to the center. Power is moved to the center. Everybody, people kill themselves to become, uh, one, take one position or the other. Is that how it's supposed to be? So, Chuma, yes, you're still I, with I'm me. Talk to, about, talk, to, talk to us about the issue of unity. Is a condition of a country dividing us more instead of bringing us together because it does, it, it's meant to be we, the people of Nigeria, the people of South South, the people of South East, all of Nigeria are supposed to come together in the North. Yes, um, you know, the, I, just like I tell a few of my friends that the main um, antagonism that Nigeria faces every day emanates from the Constitution. The Constitution is the major problem that we face in our country, a, a Constitution that does not give um, equality and equity to the different tribes that make up the single, a single nation. And so, if uh, um, uh, all the other tribes feel neglected, if they feel that they are not being carried along in the scheme of things, then where is the unity? So, uh, you know, it is very, very important. And look at if we, if the constitution review will um, will actually, you know, set out to, um, you know, create uh, policies that would unite us more, then that is a good way to go. But if the constitution review is being carried out to, you know, um, I'm trying to like a, a personal vendetta against perceived enemies, then we are trying to scatter ourselves and divide ourselves the more. So uh, let us, you know, uh, um, uh, set out our goals properly and show that the the essence of um, carrying out this constitution review is to, you know, you know. Um, uh, in, in, increase those things that unite us and diminish those things that uh, you know further um, divide us. All right, a few network just like the people of Biafra. Okay, uh, can you hear me now? Go ahead, go ahead. Try to round up. Please. All right. So, Yes, you, you, you realize that uh, the, the, the people of Biafra, I mean, the IPOB, IPOB um, um, you know, people, they actually want to, to leave the country because they feel that they are being marginalized. And, you know, the government of the day continues to fuel this agenda, continues to fuel this um, protest because of their current policies, because of their body languages. And these are things that, you know, um, you know um, it, it's actually advice of them so we need um creating viewing the constitution are things that unite us the more the, the goal should be uniting the different tribes that make up nigeria rather than dividing us the more so there are a lot of things that we need to re, you know um, thank you uh, thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much our time yes. is not really on our side we, we deeply appreciate you uh, for joining us. Uh, we'll be taking a, a few uh, look at uh, Nigeria and Ghana today. Just a two minutes from now, uh, Philip uh, will be joining us. Oh, Philip Uja is a sports analyst. Good to have you join us on the show. Tell us briefly the preparation between Ghana uh, and the uh, Super Eagles of Nigeria today. Yeah, please speak to us about the preparation. How, how is the preparation? How do you feel that uh, the Super Eagles of Nigeria will be taking on Ghana? I'll meet your mic so that I can hear, we can hear you, and of course you can also hear me, please. Did you get my question? Okay, so I feel we'll get to get that uh, because uh, Nigeria, Super Eagles of Nigeria will be taking on Ghana uh, later at the hours of 9 p.m. today. And uh, we, of course, wanted to know the preparations. And, of course, the new interim uh, manager, uh, what uh, he has put in place uh, to take on Ghana. Uh, as we begin to round up, what do you feel that Nigeria must do? What do you feel the government must do to address this, away from all of this issue that we have identified on our constitution? Because we only have this country. Yeah. All of us want this country to work. The purpose yeah. of having this conversation is that we want the right thing to be done. What yeah. do you feel that they must do so that they can heal this world? We we'll, we'll focus on bringing unity to Nigeria because all that we have on ground mm. is causing more disunity than unity. 
So let us begin to do the things that will bring Nigerians together so that actually every Nigerian will begin to speak that there is unity instead of trying to say in our preamble that we are bringing unity together. So unity is just the word. And what is the unity? Do to others what you want others do to you. Whatever you feel that is good for this, do it to the other. Do you understand what I mean? Mm. Yeah, if you have a government establishment in one place, take it to the other place. Then you, they will tell you that they're happy, that you are now working towards the unity. So Nigerians just want to feel things doing rightly and people getting equ 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 equitable distribution. E equity, equity in everything that happens in this country. That is what will bring unity to this country. And we don't need any other thing than unity. And doing those things that will bring unity is what I advise all for. of us to do, to, to do. All right. Philip, good to have you join us on the show. Tell us an update, the preparation of Super Eagles of Nigeria taking on Ghana later today. Philip, can you hear me? Please speak out. Speak to us, please. Give us an update on the preparation of Super Eagles with Ghana today. All right. Uh, so apology, we can't take uh, Philip. Uh, of course, uh, we just wanted to get an update on what are the preparations that are we are looking out forward to uh, the Super Eagles of Nigeria taking on Ghana at 9 p.m. today. We we do hope and of course are uh, wishing our Super Eagles a uh, uh, successful outing. Uh, we understand that they are great, and of course they will come out uh, great for Nigeria. Uh, Mrs. Uh, give us, um, you, you, you've made fundamental contributions to that, and of course we, we, we are saying that if government must begin to see how they can get the country to work, I think these are the recommendations that must be adhered to. If it, happens that you are, if, if it happens that you become part of a committee member to draft a constitution uh, swiftly, tell us what you would do differently so hard to, uh, to harmonize the country. I will do everything mm. that will make Nigeria to be one Nigeria. So it takes us to one Nigeria. people that are and patriotic. And the restructuring is just the, 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 the Chief Emeka and Yoko at the last uh, uh, yeah, meeting they had. Yes. I think um, during the, is it, there was one event they had. They have held a national dialogue recently, yes was also talking about restructuring and mm. a lot of Nigerians, the elites, the, yes. the, the young and the old mm. and small, are talking on restruct restructuring. Restructuring is will reduce the powers mm. from the exclusive list, from the federal government, you know, and it will bring more participation by minority groups. And when we do it, we'll make sure that everybody is covered by taking it to the grassroots for their contributions. Many times, uh, Mrs. Chinolo Oriele, the constitutional lawyer, uh, joining us for these conversations, uh, of course, uh, for the country, uh, as the review constitutions uh, process begins. And we do hope that governments, and of course the federal government, will begin to do the right thing. Uh, pe people must be patriotic for Nigeria, for Nigeria uh, to work. And that is the essence of this show. We appreciate you for watching, and of course, uh, we do hope that you get to like, and of course, and subscribe to our YouTube channel and other online platforms. I remain your host, Eric and Michael. Many thanks, Ma, for joining us on the show once again. Thank you very much. Do have a wonderful day. See you again.